June 1942. The Pacific Ocean is calm. The water stretches for miles, hiding fleets that could shift the entire war. The U.S. Navy is outnumbered, outgunned, and up against one of the most powerful naval forces the world has ever seen, the Imperial Japanese Navy. Four Japanese aircraft carriers, Akagi, Kaga, Soryu, and Hiryu, sail with deadly precision. Backed by battleships, cruisers, destroyers, and hundreds of planes, they're preparing to crush the remaining U.S. fleet and finish what they started at Pearl Harbor. But let's change one thing. Beneath the surface, something stirs. Something from the future. A Virginia-class nuclear attack submarine somehow dropped into 1942. No one knows how. It doesn't matter. It's here. So, what happens when one of the most advanced war machines on Earth enters one of the most pivotal battles of World War II? Can it turn the tide? Or will it vanish beneath waves too old for it to survive? Let's find out. This isn't just any submarine. The Virginia class is one of the U.S. Navy's most advanced attack subs. Fast, silent, deadly, built for modern warfare. Hunting enemy submarines, destroying surface ships, launching cruise missiles, gathering intelligence, and deploying special forces. At full combat load, it can carry 12 Tomahawk cruise missiles in vertical launch tubes, up to 26 torpedoes, or a mix of torpedoes and cruise missiles in its torpedo room that's nearly 40 precision-guided weapons, each one with destructive power far beyond anything in 1942. Its Mark 48 torpedoes are smart. They don't just shoot straight, they listen, track, and even retarget mid-run. One hit can rip a destroyer in half, two can sink a carrier, and then there's the Tomahawks. Each one is a long-range cruise missile, flying low, quiet, and accurate, with a range of over 1,000 miles. They can strike ships or land targets with pinpoint accuracy. The submarine is powered by a nuclear reactor, meaning it can stay submerged for months without surfacing. It can sprint silently at over 25 knots underwater. It's built to avoid detection from sonar, radar, and infrared. And with 1940s technology, spotting it would be almost impossible. But here's the catch. No satellites, no GPS, no drone networks, no communication with modern command, no repair bases, spare parts, or trained techs. Just one crew, one boat, and one impossible mission. Let's say the submarine appears a few days before the battle, early June, 1942. The crew is modern day, fully trained and aware of the timeline. They've studied the war. They know Midway is coming, but they have to operate alone. They get basic radio intercepts from Japanese naval traffic. They plot movements using old school charts. No GPS, but they can use celestial navigation and periscope observations. It's slow, but it works. And then they find it Kido Butai, the main Japanese carrier strike force. Four carriers, hundreds of aircraft, escorted by battleships and destroyers. The heart of Japan's naval power. They're about to attack Midway, but now they're being hunted. The first strike dawn, June 4th. Before a single U.S. plane has taken off, the Virginia-class submarine is in position. At 5.30 a.m., it launches a full salvo of 12 Tomahawk missiles. They break the surface in silence, then scream toward the sky. Flying just above the waves skimming under radar, they curve toward their targets, the Japanese carriers. Each tomahawk carries a 1,000-pound warhead, modern explosives, modern accuracy. Five minutes later, the sky over the Japanese fleet erupts. Akagi is hit mid-deck. Flames shoot through the hangars, igniting fuel and munitions. Kaga takes two hits, one amidships, one near the bow. Soryu's bridge is torn open. Hear you the last in line, barely gets off a few planes before it's crippled by fire and shockwaves. Before the battle even begins, the carriers are on fire. Confusion spreads, command is shattered, damage control is overwhelmed, and the air wings, the heart of Japan's striking power, are either destroyed or grounded. The entire Kido Butai is in chaos. Japanese destroyers scatter, trying to find the source, but they don't know what hit them. There were no aircraft, no periscopes, just sudden destruction. They begin dropping depth charges, dozens, hundreds, but without sonar, they're blind. The Virginia-class sub has already slipped away, 200 feet below, 10 miles out. It reloads. The torpedo room is still full. Even without their carriers, the Japanese fleet is massive. Battleships like Haruna and Kirishima, cruisers like Tone and Chikuma, and over a dozen destroyers. Some begin to regroup, others turn back, but a few press on, hoping to bombard Midway directly. That's when the submarine strikes again, this time with 48 Mark torpedoes, 
It targets the battleship Haruna. Four torpedoes launched. They zigzag under the waves. Their sonar pings. Haruna tries to evade. Too slow. Three hits. Each one explodes with thousands of pounds of force, designed to break the keel, the spine of the ship. The Haruna begins to list, then sinks. Another torpedo slams into a cruiser. Fireballs rise from the ocean. In less than 30 minutes, two capital ships are gone. In 1942, submarine warfare was slow, close range, and dangerous. U.S. subs had to sneak in, fire straight-running torpedoes, then run before they were depth-charged. But the Virginia class is built for a different era. It can strike from dozens of miles away, never surfacing, never seen. Its weapons are smart. Its sonar can map an entire fleet in 3D. It has countermeasures, noisemakers, decoys, and silent running modes. It can dive deeper and faster than any World War II ship can chase. And it has a modern crew trained in stealth tactics and deep water warfare. Against 1940s tech, it's like dropping a wolf into a sheep pen. But nothing is infinite. Let's be clear, the submarine is not invincible. Its torpedoes are limited. Every Mark 48 it fires is gone for good. Its cruise missiles used in the opening strike. Resupply? Impossible. No one in 1942 has the right parts, ammunition, or even the tools to fix this thing. One damaged propeller, one electrical fault, one bad pump. It could be over, and while it runs on nuclear power, it still needs air, coolant, and food. The crew has weeks, maybe months, but not forever. Eventually, the sub would be hunted, not by technology, but by persistence. The Japanese Navy had more than 100 destroyers. They'd start dragging sonar, chaining depth charges across suspected zones, even sacrificing ships to box it in. One lucky hit, one cracked hull plate. The future could end at the bottom of the Pacific. Still, what the sub does in a few hours is more than most ships could do in weeks. It neutralizes the carrier strike group, cripples Japan's naval supremacy, and saves thousands of U.S. lives at Midway.